Hey everyone, uh, this is Jordan Benzing here from the SC Config Manager blog team. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys really quickly how to implement the Power BI template that we put together for patch compliance in your environment. So without further ado, let's just kind of flip over here to my lab. I actually have up here, I've already downloaded, I will put in a link down below the location where you can download from our website the Power BI template. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to open this guy up. And give this just a second here to finish opening. And once it does, we're going to see that it's going to offer up an option for the number of days in the past we want to go. We've got to drop down here to choose options. I'm going to go with just 30 because it's a lab environment. And my lab only has a few patches and a couple of servers in it. Um, this is a collection filter feature. This has been asked for by a lot of people. I'm going to just go ahead and put a percent sign in here with a wild card. Um, my lab doesn't really have any lab uh, collections in it. Um, so if this was a production environment, you would filter this or use this to filter out so that it would return back like all of your maintenance window collections or something like that using your standardized naming convention. And then I go ahead and I'm going to click load. It's going to start trying to load this table information and it's going to complain about the fact that I've got a, a blank value in here and native database queries. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here and cancel here. And we're going to close this as well. We're going to come up here to edit queries choose edit queries. They've made a change in the last version on data source settings where if you only have one data source for some reason you can't change the data source up here from the data source settings option. I don't 100% know the reason why. Um, it's just that's the way it is. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to the advanced editor. Um, I'm not sure how familiar people are with the advanced editor. It's pretty powerful but this is more or less what makes Power BI do its thing. Um, so we're going to come in here we're going to, I'm just going to come, go ahead and paste it in here. Um, it's the name of my server and then the name of the database that's on there. And since I've got co-located SQL, I don't need to worry about anything of that. It's the same server. And this is my primary site server's database. And I'm going to hit done. And I'm going to go through here and I am going to, on each one of these little spots, just paste this in. And do. -do, -do a few more times um, and I guess I could kind of explain what each of these is so this first table here is compliance info it's kind of information about compliance in the environment then it's client info it's information about the clients in the environment kind of the what's the table that's used for getting client penetration information then we got the software update group information this table actually builds out information about the software update groups in the environment and we have update info. This returns information about each individual KB so that if you want the link or any information about the name of the patch, it'll actually tell you what it is that's missing. Um, this next piece here is the parameter piece. That's the days in the past right here. Um, it lets you choose the number of days in the past you want to go back to evaluate for patch collections. Again, this is really useful in large environments or for environments that have uh, not done maybe such a good job with WSUS cleanup. Um, it'll help out a lot with that. So we've got one more here to do, and this is the new collection membership piece that I've, I've added in since the last time I published it. Um, we're going to stick that in here again as well, and do that, and bam, it's going to pull back as you can kind of see here. I've got a whole bunch of, you know, test collections and information about stuff like that. This was some stuff I was testing for some production things. So um, I'm going to hit close and apply. And it's going to ask me about native database query. I'm going to say I, I trust this because I wrote it. Um, I'm going to hit run. Say that's fine. Um, I'm going to hit cancel on this. I'm all right. I must have missed one of my, uh, my queries there. So let's go back and double check this real quick. Uh, I bet it was this one right here. Yeah, I missed copying and pasting it into this one. That was my fault. So just do that real quick and do that and close and apply. Gonna load the data. As you can see, I've got one non-compliant server here. I've only got one server actually in my lab right now with it on there. Um, actually, I have three of the client installed, but I'm only deploying patches to one server, so it's the only server that's non-compliant because the others don't have patches deployed to them. So you can see I've got some organization risk footprint. I've got one server, and uh, it kind of shows all known devices versus the number of compliant devices and the number of at-risk devices. I've got one at-risk device, no compliant devices, and I've got three total known devices. So. Then I can come over here to my server field, and this will show me, I've got kind of a nice little slider here that'll show me the number of date range, um, if I want to change the dates on how far out I want to go around for patches. So I can go from, say, the 15th to the 21st. 
for the release date of patches and move stuff around like that it'll tell me hey you got this file server in your lab and it's missing this patch it's missing it's not compliant if I wanted to choose a specific collection to filter it against I could choose this one since this is the only collection it's a, a member of at the moment um, other than all systems so and then I could choose a specific software update group right here and I could choose the domain from there as well. I can also look at workstations. I don't have any workstations in my lab right now. Server client penetration. This will show the number of clients I have and the versions I have in my environment. I've got one little 18.02 client and two couple 18, uh, the slightly older version. So, but yeah. As you can see, I've got some server 2016 in here too. That wraps pretty much everything up today. I hope that explains everything. And if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and leave comments or questions down below. Thanks and have a wonderful rest of your day.